So I'm going to cut this down to just one point instead of three. How about that? Not even that long. John 17. And kind of chose to go ahead and just leave this one point to, as usual, conjunction of the morning service. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And I could put it this way. So great salvation starts with Jesus Christ. And saying that it starts with Jesus Christ, how great can you get but that? The title is, Out of This World. Out of This World. And you'll see how it even gets more in-depth when we come to it on Wednesday night. Because this is the, well, let's just read it. John 17, verse 5. John 17, verse 5. And now, O Father... Glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the, the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they uh, were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I have come to thee, O Holy Father, keep through thine own name those that thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept. And none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That's Judas. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In just reading that portion to abbreviate from the whole chapter, whole chapters in red, to abbreviate, did you notice how many times, out of this world? That's why I wanted to come and speak in that way, Jesus is out of this world. And it's in an exasperated sense, Jesus is just that great, and he's out of this world. But literally, uh, from where he was from the beginning, to where he is now. He is out of this world as we know it. This is the Lord's Prayer. And I say that specifically. Uh, this is the Lord's Prayer. Chapter 17, verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father. Somewhere from the Last Supper, when they sang a hymn and they went out, and Jesus uses the words and gives them that great comforting message of John chapter 14, the promises of paradise in my Father's house. Para, to walk along with deity, to walk along in royalty, to walk along the throne. Um, the great promises, the great presence I give unto them, the Holy Spirit, another comforter. And then I should say the great power and peace in prayer in John 16, verse 26, but now he's before the Father, makes intercession for us. And you shall ask, what shall I ask? In my name. We don't recognize the resource we have to pray in Jesus' name to the Father, or through Jesus Christ, before his throne. All that to get rapidly. Oh, is that an emergency? A runaway. Okay. Anybody we know? Oh, Piper. 
Okay, who's keeping the nursery? <laughs> okay. Uh, just to say this, we commonly hear, let's all quote the Lord's Prayer. This is not new with you. You know, Matthew chapter 6 is one rendition. But if we read in Luke chapter 11, the disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. They said, after this manner, pray, pray you, or pray, pray thou. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We, we can realize that even as it's used, it's the example prayer. He's teaching us how to pray. We won't go through all the points and make it personal. He's your Father. Make it the right address, which art in heaven. Make it the right attitude, you know, with, you know, hallowed be thy name, a respectful an approach or like that. But we know it's an example prayer when he says, and forgive us this day our our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. That's not something Jesus would have to pray. He's never in violation or forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Jesus is not any transgression of sin or be owing anybody else any debt from where he's fallen short to them. So there's indication in the passage, let alone after this manner pray you, that it's a prayer for us. But in that trek from the upper room, the Last Supper, and the great promises, Jesus looks to heaven and begins to pray. Walking, this is even before the Garden of Gethsemane, walking along the way. Have you ever prayed while you're driving? I think so. I hope you watched and prayed, right? <laughs> Why is it that if you even think at a red light that you want to close your just your eyes for just a second, you know, to be a little more sincere in prayer, that you feel like the lights already turned green, so you better look up right away, or the person behind you, you, you know, in a rush, but often, often you pray. Not every Sunday, but most of Sundays, the van route's good for me. That's my opportunity to pass uh, several churches and pass by Rich Creek Baptist. Say, Lord, bless their services today. I would like for them to have the same blessings I would like to ask for Cagley Baptist Church, you know. Uh, I'd like to pray. Uh, I uh, had a list. Oh, it's not in this Bible. It's the one I took all apart to send to get recovered. Um, I had a list. I have a list of all the pastors in the area that I know of that preach the gospel. Uh, there's a church or two I might be missing, like First Baptist Church or so like that. But I've got a, past, a list of all the pastors. I try to remember them on Sunday morning. And I remember Rusty Riggs in Texas. I remember Bob Warnick in Calvary Baptist Church in uh, Ohio. I remember Brother Mike Hager up in St. Albans because we were just friends from the past and so like that. So there's the list of pastors. And then I especially remember my brother at Redemption Baptist Church in Florida. I want their church to be blessed. <laughs> Amen. I want them to have a good Lord's Day. And I'm hoping in the Lord to pray in the Lord to do the same for us. So I'm driving and praying. We're watching and praying. Um, and here we're walking and praying from the Last Supper to the Garden of Gethsemane. I found it interesting in, re in, repeat, in a section we read, if you look down this, you'll see where he's looked to the Father. Uh, and you see in verse 11, I come to thee, Holy Father. I took note of that, but I'll tell you one I really, and another one I took note of is how Jesus addressed in his prayers. If you go down to verse 24, you'll just see, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me. But I took note of verse 25, O righteous Father. So I do believe even as we see Jesus praying himself, the reverence and the heart as he addresses and then uses an adjective and describes, O oh, righteous Father, as he comes to the conclusion of his prayer and the name he prays in. Jesus, in this prayer, mentions that where he was before. In John 17, verse, we won't read it all. Um, verse number uh, five. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee. When? Before the world began. 
We see this terminology used and explained in Philippians chapter 2, that we be like-minded as Christ, that beautiful mind of Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but took upon him the form of a man and was made in the likeness, a form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. At one time, Jesus was with the Father in his form. God is a spirit. They that worship him is spirit and truth. He is in the spirit form with his Father before the world began. And then he stepped into humanity and became made in the likeness of man. But with the glory... I read in Bible commentary, looked it up on the internet, what valuable tools you know that is, and to get on Blue Letter Bible and say, what does that word glory mean? And, well, you know, and where is it used? It's really something. It's hard to even explain. Matter of fact, most commentaries it cannot truly be fully explained with just the word glory. Is it a radiance? Is it a light? Jesus is transfigured. It's as bright as the sunlight. Uh, God speaks to Moses and said, No man has seen my glory and lived. We just recently had this eclipse and they kept warning people, Don't look directly at the sun, right? And if you don't have a camera above a certain number, don't point your camera at the sun. It's not, it doesn't have a photo cell lens that they handle the glory or the radiance or brightness of the sun. It'll burn it out or burn your uh, retinas out. The glory of God. Moses, you can't, no one's going to look at me directly. And I'll hide you in the shadow, in the cleft of the rock, and you'll see the afterglow of my presence pass by. It's hard to explain, isn't it? We see there's no need in heaven. There's no need. There is a new heaven and a new earth, you know, a new heaven and a new earth, but there's no need of the sun, for the Lord is the light thereof. What permeance... Uh, what radiates from God's presence to light things up? And that's the likeness of the glory. Jesus said, Glorify thou me with the glory I had with you before the world was. Oh, he was the energy and the light and the power and the radiance. So how, how do you describe it? Can't hardly describe it, but you kind of get an expanse of it. He has set for them a tabernacle and a testimony in the sun. There's something about that brightness. There's something about that radiance that testifies not just of the S-U-N, but of the S-O-N, the Son of God. Get a handle on this. Jesus has always been out of this world. The glory he had before the world was. Psalms 19, verse 1 3, the heavens declare the glory of God. I mentioned the morning service. Maybe we don't have the attention span that kids used to have. One indication of that is we got so many other things to do. I would, I would say that I would probably be, I love the piano. I took a few piano lessons for a year or so like that. I could play a, a, some very simple things on a piano, but I would probably be a piano player today if it wasn't for sports. I liked baseball more. <laughs> and I'd probably, I'd probably be a better guitar player if it didn't like TV. I like good shows on TV, a good one. I'm very impatient if, it, if it's not good. You can t ask Tammy about that, about five, five seconds in. Nope, acting's no good. Nope, script's no good. And I don't want to waste my time, you know. So I like that. But you know what? The things I could do, and I always wondered, how did people map out the constellations? You want to know how? They didn't have TV. They didn't have sports. They set out at night, and they looked at the stars and said, that group right there will be that, from that group right there. And to the naked eye, they could count 3,000. If they had really good eyesight, 5,000. And by the time they came along and had a magnifying glass of just no more than three, uh, than three inches, they could look up and see 10,000. And guess what they did? They counted stars and named them. And they saw the glory. Now we can go and get a telescope. And should we get a reflective telescope? <laughs> you know, at Christmas time, Sam, you talk about a temptation. Sam's was selling one that was... I think it was 8 to 10 inch or something like that, and it, you could put your phone on it and, and uh, type in Orion, 
and the thing would move. Well, it was on sale for $2,000, so I don't want to see Orion that bad, you know, I decided. But you can program a star and put your, your smartphone in the base of that telescope, and it would find it for you. Pretty cool, huh? Then there was that book. So I just casually picked up the book and just casually picked up the book and looked at it and, oh, my word, <laughs> you know, the stars are numbered Z, X, XR, 2000, somewhere like that. And, you know, you want to see that one? Well, I suppose if you looked at it, you'd just see it a little bright dot bigger, right? Except the first time I got to look at Saturn or the first time I got to look at the nebulous cluster, cluster at the wilds just by the cafeteria. You, when you're pulling in, you see that kind of brownish-looking silo standing there. And the top's not on it anymore, but you see that kind of brownish-looking silo and then a shed-like thing, and then there's the cafeteria building and stuff like that. That used to be an observatory. I used to take you young folks back there, clear back in 82, 84, sort of like that. Uh, instead of, there was no big swing or anything like that. See how things change? No big swing, no putter golf. You just hike, no, you know, you could hike. And jump in a pond or at night. Sponsors, big treat for the sponsors. The Uni University of North Carolina State is going to have their observatory open for you sponsors. You can line up the steps and go up there. Yeah, that's my first time to look down there and say, we got it set at Saturn tonight. And I always thought it would be black and white. I looked at it and went, <gasps> all that color. <sighs> they say it's dust and sunlight reflection. And then the nebula, they swing that over, and then you see, you see these clouds of gases from the nebulous of Jupiter and go like that, and you go, whoa, you know what? That's what folks used to do. Look at the stars. Say, boy, the heavens declare the glory of God. And I want you to just in conclusion, this part, part, just this first part of this, of what Jesus prayed, keep us out of the world and what world he was talking about. We're in it, but we got to keep out of some part of it. Watch what he said. Because, Father, I'm out of this world. Let's don't forget that. Started out of this world and has gone back out of this world. And every time you go out at night, you see a bright, shining star. You just say, my Lord, don't let me neglect so great a salvation, first part this morning, because my Jesus is out of this world. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Holy Father, thank you for a good opportunity to be in your house. Bless, bless now, Lord, as we realize what a great salvation. And it starts and ends with Jesus. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord bless you. Hope you have a great afternoon.